On today's episode, you'll learn how to build a million dollar business in 11 months. And if you don't build that million dollar business, at least you'll have all the secrets so you can do it much faster and better than you've ever done it before. Welcome to Thriving Launch with Louise Congdon and Kamala Chambers, the show for heart-centered entrepreneurs who want it all. Five days a week, we bring you different segments to inspire you to live a life of freedom. We interview the leading experts in the field of business, health, and love. Be sure to check out Training Tuesdays, where we give you a clear action plan to grow your own business. How would you like to be able to interview world-class experts, sit down and have chats with people like Jack Canfield, Marion Williamson, Robert Kiyosaki, Tim Ferriss, you name it. Would you love to interview other people that you really admire and consider to be your heroes? Well, we've created a course for you that teaches you how to podcast, how to set it all up and how to get going so that you can really have a successful show and you can do it properly. Over at thrivinglaunch.com, we have a podcasting course and it's there for you, waiting for you to snatch it up. So head on over to thrivinglaunch.com and let me teach you how to podcast the right way. Today's guest is James Swanswick. He's created these glasses that allow you to sleep better with more ease and allows you to block out that nasty light that comes from your computer, your phone, and everywhere else where fake light is emitted. Also, you're going to learn how to build a million dollar business faster and better than you could ever do it. Welcome to the show, James. Are you ready to launch? I'm ready to launch. Let's do this. All right. Well, uh, this is a big topic and I know there's only so much we can cover in this limited time, but building a million dollar business in 11 months, that's incredible. I'd love to hear how would someone start that process? Well, I did it with just by picking uh, a physical product that I was interested in. I did it actually just improving a physical product that I was interested in. So I'm the creator of these Swannies blue light blocking glasses, which you wear at nighttime. It blocks the blue light from our electronics and then it actually helps you sleep a lot better. But the problem was, is that I was wearing these really ugly kind of UVEX glasses. You know, those kind of glasses that you, you, you'd you wear if you were mowing the lawn or you're on a gun range. And kind oh, of yeah. Protect- <laughs> yeah. They're very unsightly. And so I had this idea. I wonder if I could, you know, get the same benefit of using the orange lens which blocks the blue light but put it somehow put it into a stylish pair of glasses and so that's how i came up with um my product called swannies for my company swanic sleep they're blue light blocking glasses they look very fashionable you can wear them out to restaurants and with you know amongst friends and people are, are always saying oh they look nice they're very in- interesting tell me about those so i didn't try to reinvent the wheel i didn't try to like think up a new product i just took an existing product which was this you know these these ugly blue light blocking glasses and i just made them a little bit better i just amended them by 20 percent to get a stylish pair and uh you know i launched uh in november 2015 and it, it became a million dollar business in 11 months so like i always tell budding entrepreneurs you don't need to reinvent the wheel you just need to take an existing product and make it just a little bit better it really reminds me of, uh, I read some studies about, uh, there's a bunch of products that people have taken and improved upon them. And, and I recall reading some book, uh, it might've been by Napoleon Hill even, but that, that talked about that, where you can make a lot of money just by taking something and making it better or seeing where there's a need that maybe someone hasn't invented, but it's, it's almost super obvious and the, the glasses thing isn't super obvious to a lot of us, but it, it seemed kind of obvious to you. And I'm curious, what are, what are some of the things that helped you promote the product, get it out there? Because, okay, so you got this thing, you know, you improved upon it, but now getting it out there so people learn about it and making sure that there's enough eyeballs on the market seeing it. Well, the first thing I did on day one was just promote the hell out of it on my own personal social media. And, and, I, I had, and to a degree, I still have a pretty modest social media following. You know, I've got maybe 27,000 followers on my Instagram, you know, 10,000 YouTube, 10,000 Facebook. I mean, it's not huge. It's not small. It, it's modest. Right? I think that's the most, that's probably the most appropriate word for it. 
And so what I did was I, I just, I posted like five times a day and said, these are my glasses. And I would do little videos uh, of me wearing them. I'd, I'd, uh, I'd interview health experts talking about the dangers of blue light while wearing my glasses. I, I begged people to share it on their Facebook page. So when I wrote a Facebook post, I would say, I would talk about the dangers of blue light and how my product can can you know address those concerns and then at the end i would say please share this with someone you might be interested in so humans need to be told what to do so if you if you don't say please share this then people won't share it but what because i asked people to share it some people shared it not a lot but maybe like only two or three percent of people actually shared it but that was enough to get it out to hundreds more people which is hundreds more potential buyers i also uh, made sure that i um, was interviewed on a lot of podcasts um, around the time. I have my own podcast called The James Swanick Show. Um, it's been around for about three years. And so I was able to, you know, call up some of the guests that I had had on my show and just pitch them this idea, hey, would you like me to teach your listeners about how they can sleep better? Um, and, you know, during that interview, I would then mention my glasses and the conversation would come up about the, the Swannies blocking glasses. And so people became interested. People would then go to my website or they'd go to Amazon, um, you know. And then from there, there's all kinds of little sort of marketing things that you can do to try and encourage people to, to buy from that point. Well, I'm sure one thing that would help people is to feel healthier and happier to grow towards a million dollar business in 11 months. Uh, one question I have for you is, uh, I'd love to hear just to, for you to share with us, you know, we're all staring at a screen all day mm. long, right? Uh, most of us, our phones, our, our computers. Will you just tell us like a little bit about uh, blue light and how that affects us? Yeah, sure. So to the listener, um, listening to my voice right now, you're probably listening to this on your smartphone. You probably downloaded this or you might be listening, listening to it on your computer. There is a light that's being emitted from your smartphone and your computer display as we speak. So if you look at, if you look at your smartphone right now, the light that's shining up out of the screen is artificial light. It's, and it, and, and it's mostly made up of blue artificial light. Now, during the daytime, being exposed to that blue light, it's okay, it's fine. But at nighttime, when your body wants to naturally produce melatonin, which is the hormone that enables you to feel sleepy, to fall asleep easily, to sleep well during the night, when you stare into that screen, that blue light prevents you from creating melatonin. So if you're the type of person who's sitting in bed before they go to sleep, staring at your Instagram or your Facebook feed or doing emails, or you're up at night watching Netflix and you're watching Game of Thrones on a Sunday night on HBO and you're standing, you're staring at your TV screen in the last couple of hours before you go to sleep, your body is unable to produce melatonin. And so your sleep during the night is not as good a sleep as you can get which means you don't spend that much time in that deep REM phase of sleep, which means you're not, you're not restoring your body and your mind as well as you can, which means you wake up in the morning feeling just a little bit tired and just a little bit lethargic. And even if you get seven or eight hours sleep, you still wake up feeling tired. People are like, I don't understand. I'm healthy. I eat well. I exercise. I just don't understand why I'm still feeling so groggy. Most of the time it's because you were exposed to too much light at night. So what my glasses do, these blue light blocking glasses, is that you wear these glasses about 90 minutes before you go to sleep. You continue to look on your smartphone, you continue to watch TV, work on your computer, brush your teeth in the kitchen light. The orange lens blocks that artificial blue light. Your body's therefore able to produce melatonin. You're therefore able to fall asleep quickly and spend a long time in that deep REM phase which means you wake up in the morning feeling refreshed, rejuvenated, your muscles have grown, you're, you've burned fat in the night, you're clear in mind, you've got clarity, you've got focus, and you're able to live your life the way that nature intended you to. 
Love it. I I think that's why. Uh, now I know why Luis's screen always turns orange at night. He set that on his computer uh, and phone. Yeah, there's yeah, there's a setting called Flux, uh, F F L U X, which you can download on your computer, and and it it re- it naturally reduces the brightness level of your computer, so it reduces that blue light. And and also on an iPhone, there's a setting called Night Shift. Um, which does the same thing. It turns orange sort of at the closer you get to, to, to bedtime, which reduces that blue light. The, and those two settings are excellent, and I would encourage you and your listeners to, to, to use both of those. What they don't do, however, is they don't stop you from being exposed to the kitchen light and the bathroom light and the street lights and the TV screen and the alarm clock on your bedside table, which is why a pair of blue light blocking glasses to complement those two things, um, you know, would work great. Cool. Thank you for that. And we only have so much time and there's so many things that I'm wanting to ask you about how you built this business, but what is the thing that you think is the most important thing that, the, that our listeners, the thriving launchers know to create a million dollar business of their own in 11 months? Well, the first thing is whatever you start doing, it has to solve a problem. I mean, all businesses really is, um, discovering problems uh, and then discovering ways to solve those problems. And like I said in the beginning, you don't have to invent something new. You just have to take something and make it a, a little bit better. I'll give you one more example. Um, there's a guy called Ryan Moran, um, who's a friend of mine, and he has a podcast called Freedom Fast Lane. And he took a yoga mat, right? This is the traditional yoga mat. And all he did was he added an, an extra foot to that yoga mat and he called them extra long yoga mats and he made millions of dollars selling extra long yoga mats that's all he did so he just went to a manufacturer and said hey can you just add an extra foot to to the standard length of a yoga mat and because of that he was able to then market that to people because what was the problem people were like these these yoga mats are too small like i can't fit on this damn thing i want a little bit of extra space and when i do my power poses and there you go. He had a business, million dollar business right away. Um, so I would encourage you to think on those things. The other thing is certainly you have to tell people about the benefits of using your product, whether it's a digital product or a f- physical product. Too many people talk about the features. Now, the di- I'll tell you the difference. The features of my blue light blocking glasses, for example, are they, they're made of acetate. They have spring hinges. Um, they're well made. They look good. They're an orange lens with that block almost 100% of the blue light. They're all features. But the benefits of my product are you sleep better. You fall asleep quicker. You wake up feeling refreshed. You look better. So they're the benefits. So I would encourage you whenever you're selling a product, whenever you're trying to persuade people to buy, you just focus on the benefits, benefits, benefits. So if you go to my website, for example, swanwicksleep.com, you'll see the first, the first headline there is sleep better. That's it. Sleep better. That's a benefit. So now when the, when the, the prospect is landing on my website, they're not seeing acetate frame, fancy 2.5 millicentimeter spring hinge, blah, 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 feature, 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 which is what most, most entrepreneurs do. They're just seeing the benefit because all a prospect wants to know is how the hell is this thing going to help me? So a few things there I would say to, just to get a business off the ground. One, just try and improve on an existing product. Just, just make something a little bit better. Facebook made MySpace just a little bit better at Facebook, you know, well, and the Facebook came in and said, let's do it better. And then just completely blew MySpace out of the water. Um, second thing is just start. Like sometimes people get stuck in their own head and they're thinking about it for 12 months, 18 months. Oh, I'm going to start this. I'm going to start this. No, just start. And then once you've started, talk about the benefits, not the features, but the benefits. And if you do those three things, I mean, there's a lot more things, but if you stick to those three things, then you're on your way to having a great business. Uh, this is so important what you're saying. And this is something that I really try to drive home as well. You know, I was, I was just talking with a client and this happens all the time with clients. I keep, uh, explaining what benefits are 
And she kept talking to me about the features. She'd come back with what her features were that she offered, thinking that those were the benefits. So I really encourage you to differentiate between what are what are the things the, that you offer, the modalities or the physical attributes of what you're offering versus what people are going to experience. So uh, it seems like a a small thing, but it's, it makes a huge difference. So I'm so glad you brought that up. Can you talk to me a little bit more about getting your product, whether it's digital or whether it's physical, getting it out there in a bigger, bigger way? Because I know that you started with your audience and it sounded a little bit larger than most people. So how do you connect with the right people? What did you do? Well, I mean, a lot of it really was um, when I reached out to suggest to people with podcasts or newspapers or magazines, and, and I reached out to them with a view to somehow getting them to interview me about my product and promote my product, I didn't go to them saying, hey, can you please write about my product? Or, hey, can I please come on your show and talk about my product? I did not do that. What I did do is I spoke in their interest. So what I said was, Hey, would you like me to, to teach your listeners about uh, seven ways that they can sleep better? So now I'm talking about what I can do for them. Hey, would you like me to educate your readers on seven ways they can sleep better? So I wasn't saying, Hey, can I, um, can you interview me about my new product that's come out? It's one of these blue light blocking glasses, which help you sleep. It was, Hey, um, would you like me to come on your show and teach your viewers how they can sleep a lot better. Do you think your, your listeners or your readers would appreciate that? And then they go, oh, yeah, great. Because the hosts of the podcast and the reporters are always looking uh, for ways and stories and interviews that will help their listeners or their readers. So just by switching the framing of it and talking in their interests rather than in my own, I was able to – book on podcasts, was able to book in newspapers and magazines. People started writing about the product and that just drove organic traffic to swanicksleep.com and also to the Amazon page. So whenever you want anything from any from anyone, you have to approach it by thinking, how can I give them value rather than how can they give me value? Even though you're actually, ultimately your end goal is for them to give you value, with press and promotion and things like that, you have to approach it with, what can I give them? What can I give their viewers? What can I give their readers? What can I do for them and speak in their interests? So great. We've been here with James Schwanwick and it's been so fantastic talking about how he grew a million dollar business in 11 months. Thank you so much for tuning in and keep thriving everyone. You've been listening to the Thriving Launch Podcast. For books and resources related to today's episode, make sure to head over to thrivinglaunch.com. We'll see you there. If you've enjoyed today's episode, make sure to stay tuned for the next podcast episode where I want to dive in with you and teach you a lot more about how to create a podcast. So if you've been wanting to create a podcast, make sure you're tuning into that episode on how to create a podcast. And we've got a whole series of episodes where we're going to be teaching you and diving into this with you. So go ahead, see you at thrivinglaunch.com. And as always, if you've been listening to the show and you love it, please leave us a rate and review and subscribe to the show on iTunes. Thank <laughs> you.